uh, welcome to this particular module. In the last module what we have seen? We have seen the statistics about oral cancer and breast cancer right and uh, in this module let us see uh, the screening techniques. So, when I talk about oral cancer what are the screening techniques that are used uh, to determine uh, the cancer. So, if you see the slide what you see here is the imaging techniques and there are different kind of imaging techniques. First is autofluorescence, second is optical coherence tomography or OCT, next one is microendoscopy, narrow band imaging, molecular based fluorescence imaging all right. So, these are the techniques that are used to uh, screen uh, based on imaging. The challenges are that requires a specialized or specialist to handle device and diagnosis, low sensitivity or specificity, difficulty in imaging different sites, not feasible for screening and surveillance of large volume, high risk population and finally, it is a high cost. Now, if you, you see here oral cancer, uh, oral precancer region which is right over this region all right and uh, it is kind of difficult to identify and uh, again if I talk about nanotechnology for bioimaging and biomarker detection of oral cancer uh, which was uh, uh, published in journal of nanobiotechnology recently then you can see that uh, there are several techniques that are compared here and the pros and cons of each of those uh, were mentioned in the article. Uh, if we start from OCT uh, then the nano contrast agents are biocompatible and provide an approximately 150 increased contrast level that is the advantage. However, the disadvantage or limitation is the penetration depths are still limited and operating procedures are complicated. If we talk about MRI then the, the advantage is nano contrast agents have prolonged blood circulation half life and enhanced relaxivity. Relax be relaxivity while the cons are the cost of MRI devices are high right. So, this is the MRI if you talk about photoacoustic imaging in that case nano sensors could effectively provide large photoacoustic signals in micro metastasis such as lymph node disease. However, the real time imaging is hard to realize when you talk about surface plasma on resonance scattering then gold nanoparticles could resonate uh, scatter visible near infrared light due to their surface plasma oscillations while the stability of target nanoparticle is difficult to control. Uh, when you talk about surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy the advantage here is that the use of nano dots with large aspect ratios can provide near infrared region plasma on wavelengths and high index sensitivity, but the limitation is the types of non nano materials with SERS effect are limited and probes are not easy to operate. When you talk about uh, nano based ultra sensitive biomarker detection the advantage is the sensitivity can enhance for detection of biomarkers with low concentration in tissue while the disadvantage single oral cancer biomarker cannot provide reliable diagnosis. We talk about uh, diffusion reflection imaging the use of GNRs is a promising method for screening of malignant oral cancer liaisons, but the disadvantage is that the diffusion reflection based imaging resolution is limited while when we talk about QDS imaging we see that the quantum dots have high fluorescent density, low non-specific binding, good stability against photo bleaching, but the disadvantage is cytotoxicity and biodegradability of quantum dots in vivo need to be improved. So, there are several techniques for oral cancer imaging, but can we come up with an alternative method where we can quickly do oral cancer imaging and which has uh, uh, more advantages and less of limitations and it is faster in terms of diagnosis. But anyway this is just a information, but when we talk about non diagnostics for oral cancer uh, sorry nano diagnostic for oral cancer then we have nano uh, scale cantilevers uh, which is a elastic beam used to attach with cantilever linked molecules. We will actually see how we can fabricate micro uh, piezo resistor micro cantilever in uh, this particular lecture uh, series. Uh, we have cantilever array sensors with an ultra sensitive mass detection technology, we have nano pores which are small holes that enable DNA passage one standard at a time, one strand at a time and that is really uh, interesting that is making DNA sequencing highly efficient. We also have nanotubes which are carbon dots that can detect uh, affected genes uh, and also uh, localize the location, we have quantum dots 
these glows very brightly in ultraviolet light they attest to proteins associated with cancer cells thus localizing tumors. So, interesting right and finally, we have two more techniques one is called nano electromechanical systems like we have MEMS micro electromechanical systems we have NEMS nano electromechanical systems alright. So, nano electromechanical systems where convert the biochemical to electrical signal we will see a micro MEMS based micro electromechanical systems based uh, piezoresistive piezo resistive micro canti cantilever all right piezo resistive micro cantilever so we'll see in, uh, in the slide somewhere how to uh, fabricate those. So, uh, and the finally, multiplexing modality by sensing large numbers of different biomolecules simultaneously. We have several techniques, right. So, what can be alternative technique? What can be alternative technique? That is our question. Now, <coughs> when you talk about examination procedures for uh, breast cancers, but women suffering from breast cancer, then now you see one is uh, all our adult women of all ages are encouraged to perform self breast right self exams breast self exams uh, I am sorry uh, at least once a month at least once a month I told you right for the abnormality in the breast. Then mammography this is every year for 40 to 54 and every 2 years 55 and above right. So, uh, this is what is uh, advised uh, to go for mammography. Uh, there are different uh, uh, techniques I like I told you one is MRI where you can see the suspected region there is a mammography uh, and then there is a breast biopsy. If there is suspected region I can see here right then the, uh, the, the patient is asked for, for the biopsy where the tissue is taken out with the help of a biopsy needle and once the tissue is out then uh, they go for different biomarkers like I said H and E, uh, P63, SMA red estrogen prostrogen all right and when uh, there is a HER biomarker as well and when all three biomarkers are absent is called triple negative breast cancer ok. So, once we discuss about this let us see what are the tools that we can fabricate that we can fabricate to understand the change in the tissue properties and to understand those uh, chips or sensors you need to thoroughly listen to the earlier lectures where I taught uh, lithography in detail, mask aligner in detail which is used for fabricating mask aligning and UV exposure right and you would understand the bulk micro machining and surface micro machining lectures right. So, this these those are my previous lectures uh, which I finished and you have to just go through those lectures once again to make sure that you understand when I say let us do soft lithography, let us do hard lithography, let us do soft baking, hard baking exposure of uh, photo resist coating, positive photo resist, negative photo resist, bright field mask, dark field mask, uh, RIE, DRI right different uh, thermal operation you should immediately get uh, idea that what we are talking about. Hmm. Still I will show you the process flow. So, it becomes easier for you when we are looking at the uh, chip design. Now, uh, uh, if you see the early diagnosis of cancer greatly improves the odds of successful treatment many people especially in developing countries lack access to facilities to detect disease and uh, there is huge demand of portable cancer diagnosis tool. So, when you say that how about oh, we develop a chip we developed a chip right that can that has a micro heater that has or that is indicated with this is a micro heater ok micro heater this is a biochip hmm? MEMS based biochip indicated with a micro heater indicated with piezo resistive sensors piezo resistive sensors and electrical sensors all right. Let us understand this process, this process where we can develop 
or fabricate a MEMS based biochip indicated with these three uh, sensors. One is we call micro heater, second is piezo resistance sensors and third one is electrical sensors. And then we will see why we are developing such a system or such a, or such a biochip and how it can measure the change in the tissue properties. Okay. So, I will I will just open a new slide. Right. And I will start teaching you how to fabricate a micro heater followed by piezo resistor sensors and followed by electrical sensors. Okay, guys. So, let us see here. All right. So, this everything uh, this biochip is made up made or fabricated on is fabricated on a silicon. Silicon is a substrate. So, uh, the first step is I take a silicon substrate. Next step is to grow silicon dioxide correct because we cannot deposit a metal directly on silicon you know that. So, first is silicon next is grow silicon dioxide this we can grow silicon dioxide using thermal oxidation right thermal oxidation next step we have to what is the process what i am teaching you i am teaching you how to fabricate a micro heater all right so on this this becomes a oxidized silicon chip right we will deposit a metal this is metal. Now, since it is a heater we prefer nichrome and I C R right. This is silicon, this is S I O 2, this is S I O 2 right. Next step, next step is to spin coat photoresist right. I had to I have explained you this thing in lithography. So, it becomes little I hope it becomes little bit easier for you to understand the process flow that I am drawing here. This is positive photoresist. This is my metal right. This is my positive photoresist. So, I will just use dots to represent it. All right. After positive photoresist, what is the next step? Next step is pre bake, pre baking at 90 degrees centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate. Right. When you do that, after that, next step is UV exposure, right. But to do UV exposure, what we have to do? We have to load a mask, load a mask such that will protect certain area and will edge the unwanted areas. Correct. So, we will load a mask. Such that we are protecting the area and we want to edge the remaining area that is unexposed. Now, since it is a positive photoresist, it is a positive photoresist, what did I uh, taught you last time? That when you use positive photoresist, the unexposed region becomes stronger. So, this one is your mask. If I exposed with UV, UV light right, what will happen? The unexposed region will become stronger. So, if that is the case after that what is my next step? My next step will be unloading the mask 
and what kind of mask this is? This is a bright field mask, bright field mask. After exposure, I had to go for photoresist developer. I will dip the wafer in photoresist developer. What will happen? The unexposed region would be stronger and the exposed region would be weaker. So, silicon dioxide correct and then we have nichrome and then we have photoresist. As you can see, the unexposed region is still there, right? After developing in for photoresist developer, and the exposed region, which is this region, one, two, three, four, five, and six, exposed region got developed. It got etched. Hmm. After this, next step is post bake. Post bake is done at one twenty degree centigrade. 1 minute on hot plate. Next step is after next step is to dip the wafer or dip the wafer dip in nichrome etchant nichrome etch or let us etch the nichrome. What will happen if I dip this wafer in nichrome etchant the photoresist that is here which protects the nichrome below it will keep protecting nichrome below it and the nichrome which is directly exposed will get etched. So, what will I have? I will have a wafer, I will have a wafer silicon dioxide is there. silicon dioxide right nichrome, but this is not correct because when you are etching it the nichrome etchant what you will have you will have the structure right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 let us draw it again. Right, And this is your nichrome and over that what you will have over that you will have a photoresist. So, this is your photoresist. As you see the nichrome which was not protected by photoresist which was not protected by photoresist got etched. Hmm. So, <coughs> this region got etched right the nichrome in this region got etched this is nichrome N I C R then we have photoresist, then we have SiO2, we have silicon, we have SiO2, correct. So, after this, what is the next step? Next step is that I will I will dip this wafer, I will dip this wafer in acetone. When I dip this wafer in acetone, then the photoresist will get stripped off water is getting stripped off will give me will give me a wafer let me draw it again SiO2, silicon, SiO2, and this is my nichrome. What I am getting? I have fabricated a micro heater. I have fabricated a micro heater. So, if we quickly go once again through this slide, what we see? We took a
silicon wafer right then we have grown silicon dioxide we have deposited metal using thermal evaporation then we have spin coat photoresist on it followed by a pre bake right pre bake is the right over here and followed by a loading of bright film mask exposing with uv photoresist developing followed by uh, after photoresist developing then what we have done we have done post bake right after post bake we have uh, etched the nichrome in a nichrome agent and once we do that then a nichrome will get etched uh, from the region which is not protected by photoresist and after that we are etching or stripping off the photoresist by dipping the wafer in acetone to get our micro heater to get our micro heater. So, how this micro heater looks like let us see that and then we will continue uh, in the next module these are the micro heaters which are fabricated on an oxidized silicon wafer uh, and as you can see uh, the each micro heater uh, is the this one I am talking about this one by this one is 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter and uh, the width and the spacing is 100 micron by 100 micron. So, uh, width when I talk is a coil width okay, like this right coil is going and then it goes here let us say it goes here like this. this. This is the spacing when I say if this is a coil this is the width and this is the spacing all right. This is the width this is spacing width is 100 microns spacing is 100 micrometers 100 microns by 100 microns. So, this is what is a uh, uh, what we have fabricated micro heater and I have already told you how the uh, fabrication of micro heater what is the process flow for that. So, <coughs> in the next uh, uh, in the next lecture or module I will teach you how to uh, fabricate a piezo resistive sensors over micro heater because our idea is to have a micro heater our idea is to have a piezo resistance sensors over micro heater and on that we have to have electrical sensors right. So, this is these are stacks these are stacks ok. So, uh, just list, uh, go through this particular lecture once again and I uh, will I'll catch you in the next module where we will discuss more about how to fabricate the piezo resistive sensors. The ultimate idea is to once a biochip is ready how can you place the tissue and understand the change in the tissue property. So, this is all about uh, understanding the change in tissue property, but uh, we should require a sensor and that is what we are uh, learning in this particular modules all right till then you take care I will see you in the next class bye.